Introduction to Flowcharts, a visual format for illustrating an algorithm. Flowcharts are used to illustrate algorithms in order to aid in the visualization of a program. Flowcharts are to be read top to bottom and left to right in order to follow an algorithm's logic from start to finish. Below is an example of the symbols used in flowcharts. So first we have what's known as a terminator and they represent where the flowchart begins and ends and usually written with it has those words of begin and end. And they show where the actual flowchart will start and where it finishes. From there, we have all our other symbols occurring between the two different terminators. So the next one we'll look at is that of an input or output. Okay, and as you can see here, it's a parallelogram and the parallelogram signifies when data is expected to go into the system or when it's being displayed back to the user from the system, hence saying input or output. So for data entry, okay, or the display of data back to a user and it's signified within that symbol there. Next, we have connecting all our different objects together is that of the arrow and indicates the flow of the actual algorithm and the pathways it will take okay, when working through the program's logic. So arrows are used to connect all our symbols together and obviously show the control structure of sequence within our flowchart. Next, we have our decision and decisions can be used to show the other two main control structures of selection and repetition. Okay, they split the flowchart sequence down multiple pathways. It can be down in a binary format where it goes in two different directions, or it could be in a multi-way pathway when it goes in a variety of different directions. Okay, and the, the actual arrows will come out from the corners of the diamond, leading our logic in different directions within our flowchart here. Then we have the process, and these are all the different instructions taking place within our flowchart. Okay, every time a certain instruction needs to be executed, it is signified within our process. Okay, so here we actually say something's happening in our actual program, okay, and it'll outline what is happening within this box here, showing what instruction is taking place. Finally, then we have a sub program and references another program sub program within the program. Okay, they'll take place. So another series of instructions or series of steps that are executing, okay, in their own independent part of the program too. So sometimes flowcharts reflect larger systems. In fact, in most cases, they reflect larger systems. So we're not going to show everything within one flowchart. So we show this sub program symbol to show there is a whole number of other subroutines taking place within this step. And that might be referred to and then shown in another flowchart in another area of my documentation. So these are the symbols you need to understand for flowcharts. Let's have an example now looking at how these symbols can be used. So we're going to look at a basic calculator example and we're going to look at it in the context that it's a program that needs to be developed in order for a user to enter two different numbers. OK, and I've actually used specific color scheming here so that user entering two different numbers. That's an input and that may I'm trying to signify that's going to use the input output symbol. The software is to either add, subtract, multiply, or divide the numbers at the user's discretion. So add, subtract, multiply, and divide, they're all processes. And so they're all gonna be reflected by my process symbol. And then finally, results are to be displayed to the user. Well, being displayed back to the user, that's output. So once again, my input output symbol is gonna be used once again there. So when you look at a question or a scenario, okay, that's asking you about a flowchart, try to think of it like this. Try to read the question and try to already straight away align it with what symbols need to be used. So let's start putting my flowchart together now. And obviously I start off with my terminator of begin. All right, so that signifies the start of my flowchart. And as the scenario says, the first step is to get my numbers. I've got to get number one and I've got to get number two. They're the two things I need to get from my user and they are both inputs. I've already shown in my flowchart here the type of variable I might be using in my code when I do that in that of num1 and num2 will be my variables that will reserve the numbers that have been entered by the user when they put it into the system. From here then, a decision is going to take place and essentially it's at the user's discretion what type of calculation is going to be conducted. So firstly, it could be a subtraction. Okay, and in that my variable of result is going to equal num1 minus num2. Okay, if that takes place, it then is going to display that result from that calculation based on what numbers the user entered. And then that will be the end of my program. So that shows one whole strand taking place there. But as said, this is a decision. It's not always going to be subtraction. The user might also decide they want to multiply. And in that case, result will equal 
num1 times num2. And if that is the case, then it will lead to that same step of displaying what result equaled back to the user, and that will be the end of the program. The same could happen for divide. Okay, if they decide to divide, it'll be num1 divided by num2, and then result will be once again displayed to the user. And I might have my program set up in a way that if they don't make any selection at all, it's going to automatically, and I'm using my otherwise option here, do an addition. And that will mean result will equal num1 plus num2, okay, and then that will be displayed back to the user in the form of result being displayed on screen, and that will end my program. So that's known as a multi-way selection where I've got multiple options selectable, or more than two options select uh, selectable to my user in this calculation. You can also see here my variables have already been kind of established here in my flowchart, okay, and that will help me when I program them later. And so the structure is all mapped out and you can see how all those pathways all lead to their result being displayed on screen back to the user there, giving the user that feedback. So I hope this video has given you a good introduction into flowcharts and they, how they help visualize the logic of a program that I'm intending to develop. I can outline variables that I intend to use. Control structures can also be highlighted as well that I'll need to program when actually creating the program itself. And obviously it helps me understand and form the logic of the program before I begin coding it and creating the program itself.